Hi, I'm Joe and welcome to Building Florence. Um, it's a good few days later after uh, the uh, interior of the hull was painted and I've just turned the boat over at a slight angle uh, to sand and prep the hull for painting. Now, it's an incredibly wet uh, week forecast so this is going to happen very slowly in drips and drabs. Not the great, greatest weather for painting so it might just be that I'm just doing the prep and then waiting for a good day or two of dry weather for uh, doing the painting. After that there's a few little fettling bits to do. Um, I need to put a, attach a rubbing strip to the keel skeg thing and then um, other, some other things, some fixings to, to fit and uh, the, the row locks still, still need fettling. Um, and then we should basically be good to uh, you know, go for a test float. That's exciting. I hope you enjoy that as much as I'm looking forward to it. So I've just gone over that with the detail sander and uh, I'm going to have to put things away again uh, sort of half an hour later uh, because I think it's about to rain. Um, I think next opportunity I'll uh, bring out a file and clean up around the daggerboard trunk and that general area where the curves are a bit more complicated. Um, so that's most of the sharp hedges removed at least. So we've had about four days of rain after I started sanding and sanding the hole and I haven't been able to make any progress. Um, I was thinking through the logistics of making, making a shelter so that I could work under it but at this late stage of the project it doesn't really seem worth it. So one of the areas I'm going to pay special attention to is the Dagobah trunk slit at the bottom here because it's it's a very tight space and it got a bit messy during the uh, fiberglassing process so there's bits of actual uh, fibre mat wedged down here towards the bow section of the fiberglass glass trunk. I'm just going to um, clean it up with the file. This could take a while. So I've managed to sand everything quite smooth. Um, I'm going to use a fairing compound now and a bit of filling mixture uh, just to fill in some of the dings that have been made while I've been filling um, and then I'm going to paint some uh, unthickened epoxy over these areas of bare plywood. So at that point hopefully I won't have to use the cat covers anymore. <laughs> Sorry, wind. So that was really quick, but it'll take a good 24 hours to cure. It's going to rain overnight, so I'm just praying that um, the rain isn't going to um, interfere too much with the epoxy. It's going to have a good sort of 10 hours now to cure before um, before it happens. place still looking for the grab and some resin and we're gonna make another batch for the filler. Oh wrong end of the stick give it a twirl so the first thing I'm gonna do is put some colloid and silica silica in this stuff is horrible and I should be wearing a mask um, but I've left it inside because I'm an idiot. So this is just basically going to go in there, really bad on a windy day, and that's going to help to thicken the epoxy. 
So just give that a good twirl. And that is starting to thicken up. Next thing I'm going to do is just add a, a boatload of talcum powder. Who knew? But apparently this also works as a, a pretty good thickening agent because it essentially is just talc. And now I'm going to source some sort of applicator so I can use this to fill the hole. So this is what things look like before. It's really rough surface here. And then afterwards, um, I'm gonna get a larger piece of wood and go over and flatten some of the ridges that I've created with the filler. So we've skimmed that back and we're going to have to sand it and there's still still a couple of areas where I've filled some larger holes there that are going to have to be sanded flat but um, it's a lot smoother than it was before and the process of skimming with that bit of ply has um, really helped to what's well, going to help me to create a glassy finish uh, for the hull. I wouldn't recommend this technique for your yacht but um, for a work boat or for a DIY budget build is it's working out okay. Just a quick one, I haven't really got the microphone but it started raining on it. It wasn't forecast but it's a bit gutting and I just hope it's going to be okay. Don't think the rain's going to be here for very long but just a covering but that certainly wasn't touch dry by the time it uh, started raining and I didn't even notice it was happening. You wait four or five days for a day that has no rain forecast and no, I might not have had another opportunity all year. <laughs> England. Right, so now that the rain has left me alone for a little bit, um, it's time to get sanding again. So I've put the cover loosely back on because we've got a big rain cloud incoming. Um, I think that's gonna only be here for an hour or two and then I can get on with sanding. So I've used the uh, two sanders to go over this with a, a 60 grit and then a 120 grit and it's kind of smooth but uh, you can see from the you can see that there are still sort of pockets and inconsistencies and I'm just going to go over with a um, small sanding block and see whether I can just sort of work out some of the the, um, the worst offenders in terms of the, the dip, dips. So while it may not be the smoothest it is now significantly smoother than it was before. In fact, it now feels quite lovely when you run your hand against it. So given how fast the wind's blowing and how much cloud there is around, um, the weather could be a bit changeable today. I think I still am gonna risk uh, putting the base primer on. Um, I think maybe I'll regret it, but I just, I'm getting quite frustrated by being held up by things. And I'd love to be able to put more fairing compound in here and make it um, smoother. Um, it's, it's gutting to me that that's not going to be a possibility, but I'm running out of time now. I have to go back to work uh, pretty soon. Um, and I just need this to be painted. Um, I've got this little bow uh, hook for a, a painter that I'm going to uh, drill a hole for uh, and then I'm going to 
uh, varnish the strip here. So I'll clean that up with a file and um, and then I'll just varnish the strip um, and then I'll mask up the uh, gunnel rail um, ready to put the undercoat on. So now I'm applying some of the marine primer undercoat and actual boutique product uh, to the hull. One boat hull with the white base coat. So it's now uh, about seven or eight days since we put the base coat primer on um, and uh, the weather has finally cleared up and there's really, well there's still a small chance of rain but, but I, I think we'll get away with putting uh, a coat of the uh, top coat on this morning and then um, hopefully this weekend uh, at, at the second coat and that will mean that Florence has got um, her navy blue hull sort of sorted. Um, Still going to be rough unfortunately because of the uh, way that the epoxy um, fairing went down uh, because of the rain. The most important thing is that she's going to be watertight. We're going for a navy blue colour on the boat hull. Um, I'm going to try and apply it with the roller. Because I am basically insane, I am uh, using a paintbrush, a small artist paintbrush, to go around and tidy the edges. So at this stage I'm just doing a bit of touching up. Now I wonder what's going to happen if I remove this masking tape. I bet it's gonna be. St I bet it's gonna stick to the wood. But um, let's give it a go gently. It's almost like I planned that. Lovely. This is not a boat. You may recall that the original idea was that I was going to be putting Florence on top of um, uh, my little mini metro. Um, it turns out she's much too heavy for that. So the only route to go down was uh, to get a tow car. Um, I sold a Suzuki Ignis um, and then traded down for this battered old hydro pneumatic Citroen, which um, yeah, it needs, a, it needs some work. So I'm gonna get on with a bit of work on the Citroen and then I'm going to fit this tow bar. It's now the depths of winter, about a week before Christmas. Um, and it's been three months since I was struggling with the tow bar. I've now secured a trailer. Um, the car is sorted and we are just about to play musical chairs with the cars and try and introduce this trailer to Florence.
the boat is now up on the trailer. I've got a few things to do to make sure it's secure, clean and safe. I'm going to be attaching this rod. Um, I think that we'll probably use it to put the flag on it, I don't know. Um, but this is mainly actually to stop the prop on this electric outboard from fouling the uh, skeg. Just by fitting this restraining rod, I'm going to stop the prop from being able to foul. The keel. I'm probably more prepared than you'd expect me to be for this because I've got my life jackets. Flares. A dry bag. After quite a lot of swearing, Florence is now on the trailer and ready to go. But I am running out of daylight because it gets dark at around half three at the moment. Um, so that is it for the today. And so from Heidi, Florence and I, it's time to say goodbye.